Okay, uh, here's the last part for this section. Uh, the first five videos are just mostly about getting set up so that you can make a recording. And uh, we're going to show you how to set the recording up in the settings for uh, the encoding settings in here. So let's go ahead and switch cameras. And by the way, you'll notice, by the way, that my video, that this video you're looking at here, it's kind of slow. Yes, you noticed it was kind of slow. It's because Camp Studio is recording a program that's recording something. Okay, so we're talking about pushing our luck here in terms of uh, operations. So I'm going to stop the preview and uh, give uh, Camp Studio a little bit of a break. Although it's, it's, it's not struggling that hard. But heck, I'm all, my actual input rate here is only like four frames a second, so no wonder. Let's see what happens when I stop the preview. Let's see if it jumps up a bit. Oh yeah, it's jumping up already. It's five, six, yeah, so anyway, uh, it's adjustable frame rate. All right, but anyway, so we're going to go into settings here, and you'll see that we're in a 1080p uh, profile right now. You can remove this profile. You can type in here and rename it. If I add a letter, the rename thing shows up. I can go in here and create, uh, I can pick a profile that I want to edit. Okay, so let's say we're gonna do the this test 721. So the main thing is, uh, I'll show you my recording one in fact. Uh, main thing is, do you wanna give the thing a name and you do that by, if you don't have one, you just start typing a name for the next one and hit add, and that will create a fresh profile that you can then make changes to. But I've got one already set up for record the disc, so I'm gonna show you some settings using that one. Okay, so the main thing is that your encoding needs to be right. Now, YouTube likes CBR to be turned off, whereas Twitch TV and Justin TV and some others like the constant bit rate to be turned on. So YouTube, though, it likes variable. So you have this on checked if you're uploading to YouTube. And if you're uploading to YouTube, you then you, if it's variable bit rate, then you basically tell it how much quality you want to maintain. In other words, how low a bit rate you're willing to live with as it's changing its bit rate around. And anywhere from a six up to six, seven, eight, that's adequate for most things. And if you're having trouble with your stream, you can lower this a little bit. If it's uh, if you're getting the little warnings where it's losing frames or anything. Now, because I'm recording though, I'm not so concerned about this. And I'm setting it at a max bit rate, pretty high, really quite high. But uh, uh, YouTube will tell you that for standard things, 8,000 is just fine. And uh, for standard, I guess that is true. But you can go up to 50,000. So basically, you're going to get a humongous file, though, okay? So the bigger this number, the bigger the file will become. All right? So just be warned about that. And for recording, you can set the buffer size to zero. So click on Use Custom Buffer Size and set it to zero. And because you're not having to buffer for streaming, you're not. That's basically what the buffering is for. Is it's uh, putting a, like a stash uh, on your disk drive or in your memory, so that it's there's always a little bit of a reserve in case uh, the stream suddenly is hungry and can get more all of a sudden. You're never running out. But we're recording, so it's not a problem. Your drives are always going to be faster than the than needing a buffer size. So you can set that to zero in this case. Uh, I usually use 1800. You've seen the videos so far. They look fine. And they were recorded uh, at something similar. So, uh, so yeah, go ahead and put it at 1800. Uh, they, YouTube likes the AAC 4800. We don't have the bit rate it prefers, which is 384. Uh, but they encode anything, if you're going to be uploading, they encode anything that's 720 or 1080p to a 192 bit rate. So, may as well leave it there. 
All right, so once you have that set, hit apply. Now mind you, remember, if you're doing Twitch TV or Justin TV, some others, click CBR. They want a constant bit rate. But uh, if it's YouTube, uncheck it and put something in the quality balance. Broadcast settings, you're going to select file output only because we're not streaming, okay? And then you hit browse and you select a folder where you're going to put things. You might want to make one if you're in your My Videos folder. Then create a folder, perhaps OBS video recordings like I did, and put your, you know, select that as the folder where you're going to put things in, like I did here, okay? You give it a root name, recording OBS dot mp4 and it will then give them numbers so you hear the recording obs mp4 let's go again into my uh oh i don't know what the heck happened here all right browse oh when lost my lost that setting so let's go back into here my videos and the obs video recordings. So I just have to, you know, click that, click open. And you'll notice that it's done recording OBS uh, 1, see recording OBS 01, 02, 03, 04. So it adds names. You don't have to come in and rename that every single time. Get what I'm saying? Just put in a root name, a base name, and it will add the ones, two, three, four to it. And then hit apply. If you want to start the uh, recording with a hotkey, you can do so for it here. Start recording hotkey. Now the video settings. Oh, no, we won't change. Video settings, if you want 1080p, then you set this. Now this is going to be your your input, what your card, what your video card set up, basically what your monitor's resolution is. If you still if you actually want to record that, then you keep it at the same. So you say none. But you might want to downsize it. There might be good reason to downsize it, like file size. Maybe you don't need a humongous 1080p video. But I will tell you, uh, if you're doing YouTube, it's best to send them the biggest thing that your computer will manage. A lot of computers cannot manage recording a 1080p video that easily. Okay? Uh, this can be a strain for some. And in fact, this is a strain for my computer but at least I am getting a, oh, a whole 11 frames per second out of this right now. But that's adequate for a, for a you know screen sharing video like this. But still, I'd probably uh, drop my recording down to the 1280 by 720. Now this is where you do this. You leave this at the native resolution and then you drop it down here to a lower resolution and they have a few different means of which to do this. This is the best way to do it, best uh, detail. I would go ahead and leave it at this. Unless your machine is chugging along and really suffering, leave it at this, okay? Uh, the bilinear will, it's less uh, CPU intensive, so you can do that. It's a faster algorithm, but I'd leave it at length, length so. Uh, your frames per second is usually set at 30, for me to stream, if I was streaming, I have to lower this to 25 or to do 1080p, or I cannot do a stream at 1080p. But for recording, you'll probably be okay at 30. If not, though, if it's struggling, you can drop this. It will not harm anything. You can drop it, okay? Uh, remember, film is 24 frames per second, so don't feel bad. And I... Uh, if you're using that monitor capture, then disable the arrow, unless you're on Windows 8. If you're on Windows 8, supposedly, they fixed whatever it was that was giving it difficulty in Windows 7. Uh, but if you're in win Windows 7, uh, disable the arrow if you're using monitor capture. And you notice we used monitor capture in our demos. Doesn't mean I had to. I could have stuck with window capture all the way, and then this would not have been as big an issue. All right, but uh, but that's that's the big nitty gritty. We've already seen the audio, and I don't need to change anything here. And uh, the advanced for YouTube, this keyframe interval has to be at two. 
So you have to, it comes default at one, and the other streaming services are fine at one, or they tell you if they don't like it. And uh, but you change this to two for YouTube, or it will reject your stream. Okay, you don't have to touch anything else in here. Nothing else. Don't pay any attention to this stuff. These settings I've got. Well, okay, you can pay some attention if you if you do what I've done here, use CFR and have the custom encoder settings at 18. This is how you control whether it's going to be, uh, whether it's going to be like lossless or not, or if it's going to have some, some other stuff. So this is not uh, CRF, this is not CFR. CFR is constant frame rate where you're trying to hold at 30 frames a second the whole time but crf is different okay and i can't remember what that iron word stands for at the moment but it's not the same so remember this is cfr this is crf and it allows you to change the quality setting so that it, you're not trying to push out a whole lossless but you're not doing that much compression either so 18 is recommended by a lot of people for doing uh, recordings to disc and so go ahead and try it. You can up it to 19, 20, 21, 22. Depends. The higher the number, the lower the file size will become because it's compressing it more. So you just have to tweak and experiment. But you can go ahead with my settings and you'll be probably perfectly happy. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the big skinny on all of that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully you've got... Um, some good information there that's going to keep you going and you'll be able to do some recordings so uh, let's see um, let's see let's see let's see okay I was going to do you and a there we go okay so I wanted to be able to at least say <laughs> see you later and uh, this camp studio comes with a little uh, Little device lets me let me do, lets me do an insert. So there you go. So hopefully, after these five videos, you're now at the point where you can get the audio in. You can create a scene, several scenes with different cameras, different windows, and you're equipped enough to start experimenting and not be afraid of the basic interface, which, as you see, is very right-click oriented. A lot of right-clicking, and and it has a lot of possibilities. I have a few plugins that I got at the OBS forum that you probably saw in there that uh, that you won't have. Um, the Direct Show Audio Source plugin is one of those that I think is really, really cool. It's, uh, it's an alternate way to get audio in that you can change uh, on a scene by scene basis what the audio source is so unlike the setup that we did with our audio where it's a fixed microphone input and that's the mic input for everything right this allows you to have a different type of audio source depending on which scene you've selected and that's really really cool and it's, uh, there's some others in here that you probably wouldn't need and most of these though now come standard with it and so you needn't even worry about running off to the site and downloading these things. But to be aware that the forum at OBS is a gold mine of information. You can ask questions there and they will be answered by somebody really, really fast. And uh, so definitely use that resource. You can ask for improvements and you can be directed to some really interesting articles that show some of the more incredible ways that you can use this software. But of course, I'm going to be making some more videos pretty soon. I made these five just in one sitting pretty much so that I could get people started on making recordings. But now I'm going to move on to how you get some uh, streaming happening and select different settings for your stream. And that will be pretty much all based inside of how you set up these profiles. And as you see, I have many profiles that I use for different types of applications. Okay, so I'll be covering how I made those profiles and why in future videos, but be on the lookout for those and uh, see you later. Take care.